Campagnolo Eckhart. This is what we're going to talk about just hopefully very quickly. Um, when I was testing the Time ADHX bike, I put out a couple of YouTube shorts. First one sort of going, I don't really understand the ergonomics of this gravel group set. And is anyone out there using it? Tell me how, to, how it works. The, what's meant to be an ergonomic lever just didn't feel to me like ergonomics. And then I put out another post after I finished the review saying I was just really disappointed with it. Loads of you asked me to elaborate. Bunch of the Campagnolo fanboys jumped on me saying it's because I've set it up badly. Um, brilliant. Thanks for that. Um, and I just thought, well, actually, what I do owe you is an explanation rather than just throw away comments. So unfortunately, the group set has gone back, but I don't have it in front of me. So we're going to do this a little bit off the computer. But just to let you know, sort of my experience of working with it, I've set it up a few times in the workshop, changed cassettes, changed cables, um, installed it onto new bikes a few times. And it works fantastically when it's in the stand. This review that I did with the Time ADHX was the first time I've had a chance to use it more than just around the car park. I had 10 days with the bike. I did a few hundred kilometers on it and nearly every single ride I did with it, I had to really, really focus on the frame because the group set was doing my head in. And I'm going to try and explain that to you a little bit because I just feel like this is the emperor's new clothes of group sets and it is such a shame I just when I was testing it I just had this vision in my head of like the Campagnola engineers all sat around in a room and someone saying you know we really should get on this gravel gravel is so popular now we need a, a gravel offering and all these Italian Campagnola engineers sat around drinking their espresso coffees like not me I don't want to do it I don't want to know we're a road brand someone saying hey do you remember what happened when we tried to do mountain biking that didn't go well and begrudgingly some poor engineer has been assigned the task of making a gravel group set and that's what it feels like it feels like a begrudgingly made group set that they really didn't want to make but they did it anyway i'm going to try and justify that a bit as we go so let's get into this first of all i am not a campagnola hater the centaur the chorus group sets are fantastic they're strong they're durable they're well made they'll serve you for a lot a lot of years and for those ring brake fans you don't have an awful lot of choice if you still want to maintain a mechanical shift in with this as well so long may these two exist it's a shame they don't have a veloce anymore hopefully they'll bring that back one day never been a massive fan of record and super record just in my mind i've never really been able to balance off the cost to benefit ratio in those two but whatever we all have our budgets so eckhart then this is their one by 13 group set looks beautiful doesn't it so the crank sets look great you know all look good i'm just going to go through this sort of in the website order if you like and just share my experiences of it so first off this rear derailleur classic campagnolo well made the barrel adjuster has got loads and loads of adjustment on it it's not like shimano where a few turns and it's backed out it's got loads of adjustment on that and it just works the all the pivots seem beautifully well made the clutch has kind of got a weird thing where it kind of gets stiffer and stiffer as higher it gets off the cassette, but whatever. Um, the main problem with this is that these tiny, tiny little screws, I don't know what it is, but they were just always full of mud. And whenever I came to adjust it, I had to get in there with a pin and pick them out. They, I don't know why they had to use something so small and so buried uh, on such a component, on an off-road component. Road, probably fine. On For an off-road type group set, um, I just think that's such a poor choice of of material there has quite a cool interesting feature this little novel here uh, when you pull the wheel out it kind of holds the holds the mech back just like the SRAM stuff do but you don't have to press a button it does it automatically but then you have to release that that button so that's it, fine this is probably what I've got the biggest problem with is these cassettes now um, I'm gonna go into the ratios in a second but my big gripe with the cassettes now I have changed cassettes for people I've set them up and when I was riding that time AHX this cassette made so much noise and you're all going to go oh it's cool you didn't set it up properly yeah whatever now the noise it was making is not indexing noise every single gear was indexed perfectly the B limit screw set up perfectly in actual function it works but in the bottom couple of gears absolutely perfect silent in the highest few gears perfect absolute silent those gears that you use most often in the middle of the block just constantly felt 
and well, they just didn't feel. They actually sounded horrific. It's like that sound if you're a mechanic, you'll know what I mean. It's when you've put a new chain on a worn cassette and you know it doesn't interface properly. You can hear that noise. That's what it felt like. But I was reassured by the guys from Time who've been riding it that it's not a particularly worn out unit. It's just that's where he spends most of the time riding and it was just worn out in those middle gears and it had worn out pretty quickly because the rest of the cassette looked virtually brand new. But I was surprised when things start wearing out that unevenly, just how quickly it just made an absolutely, ah, uh, then the noise was just horrific off it. Um, and it just seemed to get, seemed to get worse. So the durability of these, I am really, really wasn't very happy with. Let me get onto the gear ratios, which were um, bonkers. Now, uh, they've got three different cassette ratios. The endurance one, which I've, to be fair, I've never ever tried, looks fairly similar to a SRAM unit. The gravel race and the gravel adventure, now they try and advertise it as a feature that it is closer low gear ratios and the um, down here I think it is compact changes. So the idea is that everything is very, very close together at the high end of the block. So the high gears, look at this, 10, 11, 12, 13, all very sequential. And then all of a sudden it just jumps massively. Now it's it's a bit like having front derailleur shift anxiety um, but not being able to do anything about it. So what was happening, we were sort of riding along on a, on a road with your buddies and you're a bit of a slope coming up and you'd be shifting through the gears as you, as you all do. And if for those of you that are running two by system, you'll know that what happens is you change from the big ring down to the little ring, you put a couple of little shifts in at the back as well, you pick up the chain slack and away you go and you're riding along. Anyone riding one by normally you just shift through the gears perfectly. What happens with this is that now you get to that rise and you're gradually making the gears easier and easier and all of a sudden there's going to be a massive jump um your mate's going to shoot off 10 meters down the road and you're going to be left there doing 120 rpm like a little hamster um trying to pick up the chain slack and as a result you kind of adjust your ride until you spend too long in too high a gear or you end up dropping off the pace and like saying goodbye to your mates and they've already been dropped on the hill before you even had a chance and then you've only got three gears left for the hill climb. There's not really anything in between. And I was just constantly fighting between like too high, too low, too high, too low. And there's just nothing in between. Um, I don't think that works at all. I think that's a really, really poor idea. I could never find a terrain or a combination that I was happy with. I've, the SRAM stuff works for me perfectly. A two by system works because you can actually do something about it. You know, you can rear shift to compensate for your front shift but this just didn't work right uh, next up um, this crank set I have to say beautiful would look good on any bike and it's probably the biggest buy decision this is what I mean by the Emperor's New Clothes of group set because this looks fantastic price is all there it makes it feel premium but it just doesn't work that way in practice bottom brackets never had a problem with um, Campagnolo bottom brackets. If you're a home mechanic, you're probably going to find it a bit of a pain in the ass because you do need some specialist tools to remove uh, bearings and stuff. But for most pro mechanics, that's um, it's not a problem at all. Chains are fantastic. They last forever. These ergo shifts, uh, this is just where I think they've messed up the most because they just do not work for gravel at all. Now, in their road shifters, they're... They're fantastic. You need to sort of wrap the bar tape in a certain way to sort of ease out the transition from bar into um, shifter, but most mechanics have got their head around that, I think. These just did not make sense for gravel riding at all. So the the area for you to grip on is quite small, uh, and you want to sort of be able to cover the brake while you're riding on the hoods, um, as well as being uh, riding on the drops. And that's okay, but then it's sort of where that curve is here, uh, it encourages you to have quite an open grip where it'd be better if it was straighter like the SRAM and Shimano ones or even a bit more flared like the Shimano GRX ones which are excellent. This kind of encourages you to open your grip more rather than sort of close it around and where the shifter is you have to sort of open your hand, roll your hand back and then actuate a shift. 
So you have to loosen your grip when you're on an off-road situation in order to change gear and remove your hand from the brake, which I don't think is that ergonomic for off-road riding. The little thumb shifter lever on their road ones, I don't really have a problem with. It's fine. It doesn't really irritate you. They've made it significantly bigger on these. I don't know if I can find a picture for you, but because they've made it bigger, oh yeah, here we go. Um, they've made it so much bigger here, it just rubs the inside of your thumb. And I couldn't really find a comfortable place for me to rest my hand without something just being in the way. They do have these little adjustment screws here with the reach adjust, but that just wasn't, wasn't, wasn't doing it for me at all. Now, down on the drops, fantastic, works brilliantly. You're one finger braking, you can change gear here. That's, that was all kind of working for me. Up on the hoods, just, I just couldn't get my head around the ergonomics of it at all. Not for road, not for gravel. I just don't think it, it worked. There we go. That um, might be an unpopular opinion, but I just think they really, really had an oversight on that. Okay. Uh, finally, I think we're on to the, the brakes. These are made by Magura, I understand. They, they work well. The pads didn't seem to fit properly. They constantly felt like your headset was loose because the pads were moving and the rotors were floating as well. And the sort of two combined just always felt like you had a loose headset. And the effect of that is when you were, when you were riding and you put your first sort of braking moment in, you would get a very sudden bite point. Um, I have to say the modulation for that is not to my liking. You had a very, very, very sudden bite point. The bite point is really, really sudden and <laughs> comes on. And then you get very little modulation to actually control the speed. I had to really adjust how I rode because I was kind of over braking <laughs> quite a lot, especially for corners as well. I'd be slowing down way too much for corners, just scrubbing all my speed without even realizing just because uh, they are amazingly powerful. Don't get me wrong. And the bite point is solid, um, probably too solid. But the modulation for me, just there was just nothing. It was it was on. And then you had probably two or three millimeters of movement before you were fully locked up. Um, I'm not a fan of that. I like to have a little bit more movement, especially on descents. I like to be able to feel like I've got three fingers wrapped around the bar, my fingers there, and I've got control of the brake. This was like, it, it was such a fine trigger. It almost felt like a trigger, in fact. So um, there we go. And I think finally, the, the disc rotors, um, these just, they do float similar to the Hope rotors. I, yeah, it's fine. It, it is what it is. So... There we go. I've shared my thoughts. I've put it on there, out there. Now you know why. It's just, for me, it just didn't function as a gravel group set. The ergonomics weren't right. The cassette made so much noise. Uh, the, only way of the only way of getting rid of that was to change the cassette, which definitely had not worn out to its fullest. There was definitely life left in that cassette yet, but the noise was just driving you absolutely insane. Oh, one more thing, actually. I did change the cables on that ADH checks as well because the <laughs> the the indexing is really really fine. If it that cable is even slightly kinked or even slightly dirty, the index is gone. So if you own one of these, you are probably going to end up changing that cable quite a lot because it is definitely doesn't it does not tolerate even the slightest bit of dirt. It has to be moving absolutely perfect to keep that indexing correct. Okay, looking forward to getting slammed on the comments. I've done my GT. I've shared my thoughts on it. Love it or hate it, up to you now. All right, cheers for listening anyway. Take it easy.